Somebody Else's Prince, Part 6. In the wood, under a hazel tree, sat a tall and beautiful girl, weeping bitterly. Oh dear, oh dear, said Princess Venetia Ella. How dreadfully sorry I am. Why? asked the girl, looking up at her. Because you are crying, to be sure, answered the princess. Will you tell me why you are so sad? My mother, who is always making experiments, wants me to marry a prince I have never seen, just to see how we should like it, explained the girl. And all the while, I am somebody else's princess. That is very strange, remarked Princess Venetia Ella. Now I am sad because my prince has got to marry an enemy, the witch's beautiful daughter. I'm trying to find her to tell her that he really is my prince. Do you think that she will want to marry him when she hears that he's somebody else's prince? The beautiful girl suddenly sprang to her feet and began to laugh. I'm sure she will not, she answered, for I am an enemy, the witch's daughter, so nobody will have to marry anybody's prince except her own, and the witch will not be able to make experiments any more. That is settled then, said the princess contentedly. Now let us go and find our princes. But supposing I find your prince first, how shall I know that he is your prince? His name is Hyacinth answered the witch's daughter. Oh, how delightful, cried Princess Venetia Ella, clapping her hands. Then I will find my brother as well as my prince. Do you know where they are? An enemy, the witch's daughter, began to look doubtful. I've just remembered, she said. I sent Hyacinth to kill your prince, but only a few minutes before you came along. Do not be anxious, she added. Perhaps he will not be able to find him. Princess Venetia Ella was not anxious at all. Nobody could possibly be strong enough to kill my prince, she said. And as for Hyacinth, he will be quite safe, for Prince Amorellis is much too nice to hurt anyone. She proved to be right, for in another minute they saw the two princes coming towards them arm in arm. And if this should seem extraordinary, it must be remembered that it all took place in an enchanted wood, where a witch had been making experiments for hundreds and hundreds of years. There was no necessity to kill him, my dearest, cried Prince Hyacinth, for he is somebody else's prince. He held out his arms as he spoke, and into them ran an enemy, the witch's daughter. And of course, there is no need to tell whose arms the little princess ran to. After that, there was nothing to be heard in the wood except the sound of their kiss, until the witch suddenly stepped on the scene. Cobwebs and broomsticks! What is the meaning of this? she cried furiously. Three of them turned round and faced her in an extremely nervous manner, for after all, a witch is a witch, and they knew fast enough that she could turn them into any shape she pleased. Princess Venetia Ella did not seem nervous, however. Oh, why, you are the nice old lady I met in the field, she said. I believe I am, said the witch, who had never been called a nice old lady in her life before, and was not quite sure how to take it. I have found my prince, you see, continued the little princess, smiling as happily as possible. So it seems, said the witch. She was afraid to say more than that, in case the princess should find out who she was. And she thought that she would like to be a nice old lady for a little bit longer. And have you found anyone yet who has so brave a heart that the thistles cannot hurt it? asked Princess Venetia Ella. I think I have, said the witch. Then we all have found what we want, smiled Princess Venetia Ella, and the witch cannot surely be so unkind 
as to refuse to disenchant the kingdom just because her daughter doesn't want to marry my prince. Do you think she can? The witch dropped her thistles and held out her hands to the eager princess. My dear little girl, she said, the kingdom was disenchanted the moment you came into it. As for the witch, there is no witch any longer, for she retired into private life as a nice old lady just ten minutes ago. Now, as you all seem to have sorted yourselves the right way, the best thing you can do is to go off home as fast as you can. No doubt that is where an enemy must have gone with her prince, for when the little prince looked around, she found herself standing once more in her own garden. There was no one there with her except Prince Amarellus. Now, may I come and play in your garden? asked Princess Venetia Ella softly. The prince shook his head. I have a much better idea than that, he said. We will pull down the wall and make it into one garden. And now it is time for all little children to go to sleep. Good night.